Ah, uh, yeah, that's because of us going through Skype to the YouTube and YouTube to them. So, and it seemed like we had an, a problem like that before when we were doing this, that people were getting an echo and we had to figure something out, but I'll keep talking. Anyways, hello and welcome to another live stream from the only source of information you need to not only survive the current apocalypse, but actually enjoy it. And I'm going to try to keep this particular live stream more spiritual while I still got some, I got some things in my, in my head because uh, I'm working on the Melchizedek script. And I've been doing some very deep study of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 because there's several verses that are very important to the subject of uh, Melchizedek, how Melchizedek relates to Jesus. So what, what 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and in particular all the way from, from one, it's the entire thing really, from one to... 50, 58, but in particular, I guess beginning in verse 12, Paul is trying to explain to people what the resurrection is going to be like. So that's, a, that's important for all of us because people were wondering, how, how are we resurrected? What, what is life going to be like after we're brought back to life? And of course, for those who live to the end, <clears throat> a couple of verses say we don't have to be brought back at all. You, you know, we'll just be changed in an instant, um, as First Corinthians brings out, so that those who are dead will be brought back to life, and those of us who are still alive will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And that mirrors something that Jesus had said earlier when, when Mary or when Martha's brother Lazarus had died, and he said, well, I'm the resurrection and the life. He who believes what, I, what I'm saying is going to uh, be raised from the dead. And, and those who are alive who believe what I'm saying will never have to die at all. So those of us who are here, when the end of civilization comes and the dead are resurrected, we ourselves will be changed into the same form that they're in without ever actually having to get some dreaded disease or, or die in some kind of an accident or by you know, some uh, old age. So Paul is addressing what that's going to be like because people are wondering. And he says, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be would even be found to be mis misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope, in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. So, I mean, this is, this is an important thing to keep in mind. Paul is saying that what happened to Jesus happened so we could have faith that it will happen to us. So if we believe that Jesus came back from the dead, then we can have faith that we will come back from the dead. That's an important thing. Important point, but it leads to an even more important point. <clears throat> so, someone will ask, and this is in verse 35, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35, but someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel perhaps of wheat or some other grain, but God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind of flesh for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is of one kind, and the glory of the earthly is 
of another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory for the moon and another glory for the stars. And for stars, each star differs from star in glory. So he's telling us we're all going to come back, but we don't come back exactly like we are. And, uh, of course, when Jesus was on earth, he could perform miracles. And there came a point when uh, Nicodemus approached him and said, how do you do these miracles? Now, what Nicodemus was really act asking was, how can I do miracles? Because Jesus said, well, you have to be born again. And Nicodemus said, so how can an old man go back into his mother and be born again? That doesn't make any sense. And Jesus said, I promise you, you have to be born again. Or you can never even see the kingdom of heaven. Now, Jesus had been born again. He, through the Bible, it talks about Jesus existing before he was uh, born in the first century from Mary. And so he, uh, when he said, you must be born again, he had already experienced that. But what he was talking about was not Nicodemus being born of a virgin. That would never happen for Nicodemus. But, in a sense, Nicodemus would be born again at the resurrection just like Jesus was, could be said to have been born again at his resurrection. So Paul goes on, and I highly recommend that you read the entire uh, 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, you know, if you need something to, to read while you're trying to get, get to sleep at night, that'd be a, a good recommendation. And he, he explains there's a difference between a fleshly body and a spirit body. Well, Jesus started to do miracles when he was born in the first century. So he was walking around as a man before he was crucified and raising the dead, giving sight to the blind, uh, casting out demons. He walked on water. And so apparently he already was doing some miracles and he was able to give these powers to his apostles. So the apostles, they're examples of the apostles resurrecting dead people and healing sick people. And in particular, after Jesus was gone and Paul's ministry began, Paul actually brought somebody back to life. He, uh, a man, <clears throat> I think his name was Eutychus, he fell out of a window while Paul was preaching and he died. And so everybody went downstairs and Paul laid his hands on Eutychus, he came back to life. So they picked Eutychus up and they carried him back into the house. But one of the things that happened to Eutychus is that he eventually died. And there's no stories of Eutychus raising the dead or healing the blind or anything. But Paul did. But Paul himself eventually died. Well, if we go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and read that, Paul says that when we're resurrected, one of the things that would happen is that we would, we would go off perishable, but we would return imperishable. So right now we're humans, we, we get sick, we grow old, we die, and, and Paul died, and Jesus died. All the apostles died. So they had these powers that they could do these things, but one thing they couldn't do is live forever. But Paul says after the resurrection, you will live forever. Well, I, I got to thinking about all the stuff that Jesus did before he died and all the stuff he did when he came back, and it's all pretty similar, but there are a couple of things that is, I seem to remember that <clears throat> he didn't do before, is at certain points, he, he just appears out of nowhere. In other words, there's a, a time when everyone is in a room, the doors are shut, and Jesus is in the room with them. Somehow he got in there without going through the door. And there's no example of him doing that before he died. But another thing that he did is that when Thomas doubted that he had come back from the dead. I think Thomas said, you know, I'm not going to believe in this until I can put my hand in his wound, you know, and, and feel for myself that it's actually him. And so when Jesus appeared before Thomas, Thomas was able to put his hand in Jesus' wound. Now, it doesn't say that Thomas put his hand in Jesus and swirled it around like Jesus was just a ghost or something. It's as if he actually put it in there and, you know, I guess he could feel his intestines or the bones or whatever was there. And, uh, and so that indicates that, you know, Jesus maybe was kind of like a ghost or something. He, he really didn't have a physical body. But that can't be true. Because at one point, Jesus appeared to two of his disciples on the road. 
And as a result of that, they stopped somewhere to eat, and Jesus ate. So he still was able to interact with physical things. He still, well, I, I don't know that he required physical nourishment, but seemingly he, he did take in physical nourishment, and he apparently enjoyed it. But uh, it, it reminds us of the angels that appeared to Abraham. You know, they were able to do all these uh, magical things that no human could do. But when they met with Abraham, Abraham said, go, you know, slaughter a calf and get milk and cheese and bring out some bread. And they all ate. Abraham and his family ate and the angels ate. Uh, even though they were able to do these miraculous things that Jesus was doing after his resurrection. I don't know of anything I want to add to that, but... Just keep in mind, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul consistently compares what we're going to experience after the resurrection to what Jesus experienced after his resurrection. So there may come a time when you can uh, let your buddies put their hand inside of your chest, and you'll, but you'll still be able to eat. And when he ate, the food didn't fall out on the ground. It actually stayed in his body. So there was he, he, he had the ability to to uh, do physical things in a physical way, just like we do now. But he also had these uh, amazing abilities that we cannot do now. Okay, well, uh, first of all, we have the tech support. Uh, they didn't necessarily say hello, but uh, I'll mention them for their help. Uh, we had uh, Pa Joe, Crystal Emmerich, Steve, Stephen Chapman, Bob G, and K. Ken, they all helped out with uh, the sound issues. Initial uh, hellos are coming from Everton. FC uh, is the best. He says, hey. My Palm Star says, hello, hello. Courtney Hutchinson says, hey, good afternoon, y'all. Rick Ballard says, howdy, Henry and everyone. Patricia Ribrick says, finally found my way here from non-existent land. Not sure what that means. <laughs> uh, next is uh, Gerald Merica. Uh, he says, I was dead inside. Uh, Watchman says, uh, I was a desert wanderer. Prune Pricker says, greetings from the DPRK Democratic People's Republic of California. Uh, then there's a use. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. <that's laughs> true. And he spells California with a K. Yeah, I'm always told that. <laughs> United yes, States of China. Uh, next, um, <laughs> Morning Gardener Show uh, makes an appearance. And uh, let's see. Joe Serena says, hi, Henry. He's 10 minutes late, but I'm here listening to you. Uh, oh, you know, I Joe think he's Serena? in Mexico, oh, by yeah, the way. Where at? Oh. Yeah, I think so. I think that he's down there somewhere. That's where Al Toledo was yeah, just spent the last year or two. And then finally, uh, Marie Miller says, yes, I'm here, just a little bit late. And I don't think we have any. Yeah, yeah really. that's all of us, right? <laughs> We're all a little bit late. Uh, Watchman says, uh, Paul's key to understanding all of it, flesh, spirit, law, grace. Not sure what he means by that. Yeah, there's a, you know, there, one of the things that I didn't bring out in that is that when, when Jesus said, you must be born again, in the King James Version, he actually compared the flesh to the spirit, just like Paul did. But Paul used uh, the word psyche in pneuma at uh, chapter 15, verse 45. Psyche is the word that gets translated as soul, and pneuma is the word that gets translated as spirit. And so you think about a soul, that's not flesh, but it really is. You know, in the very beginning at uh, Genesis chapter 1 and whatever, it says that God created Adam in his image. He breathed the breath of life in him, and Adam became a living soul. And as part of that creation account, it says God created the fish, and the fish became living souls, and the birds became living souls. So our concept of the soul is something invisible, but that's not the concept of the soul according to the Bible. The soul is always a fleshly living creature. Sometimes I'll use a soul and not correct myself simply because I know what people think. And in English, the soul is the invisible part of a person, even though that goes against the Bible. But in the book of 1 Corinthians, you say you have a soul body. So if in 1 Corinthians 15.45, it says psyche and pneuma, but 
the verse prior to that says psychotron and pneumaticon. So it's like a soul-ish body and a spirit-ish body. But I just wanted to clarify that, that our uh, flesh, our soul, is our flesh. Our spirit is the thing that animates our flesh. But it, it seemingly does more than that. And, and apparently, according to Paul, once you, you die in your fleshly body, you're resurrected in a spirit body. So it's almost like our body is something like science fiction. You know, I guess a lot of churches say that we turn into a ghost and play, go into a cloud and play a harp or something. And, there, you know, every religion has a little bit of truth to it. It's possible that uh, our fleshly, our physical bodies after the resurrection are going to be powerful or magical, just like Jesus well, um, Mike Rogers, I'm not sure if he's responding to what you're saying, but he says, living and surviving it. And then Matt Wilcox uh, chimes in. He says, yet another type of spirit body is the one God, Yeshua, walked with Adam in the Garden of Eden. Yeah, it makes sense, I guess. You know, it seems like it. seemed like that would make sense. And then Patrice... I try to I try to not go beyond what I know for a fact. I was like, you know how you and I talk. I always I know it's just us, and I'll say things that I believe that I can't prove from the Bible. But a lot of things make sense, and I don't I don't you know tell anybody that they're wrong unless they're really obviously wrong. You know, unless I know they're wrong, and that's that sounds that makes sense. Uh, Patricia Ribrick uh, says, according to Kabbalah. We are all parts of one soul, and we are here to learn unity. We learn by love your neighbor as yourself. Well, I'll tell you something that I really do think, and I don't. I don't think there's anything to to counter what I'm saying. Is that there, there is a, you know, when the when the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit, that's something that flows through all of us, and if it just stopped, we would all be dead. That's the inner the life energy that's in everybody, but when it talks about the wicked spirits, it really doesn't call them wicked so much as unclean. So it's the Holy Spirit, but it's polluted or contaminated by these other spirits, you know, the, the spirits that don't belong there. And so, you know, to me it just seems like when Jesus had all of these demon-possessed people that were filled with wicked spirits, that that's what we're seeing today. You know, the closer we get to the end, the more people are going to be engaged in bizarre behavior and dividing up into teams and becoming violent and becoming illogical. And, you know, it's not just on the news, just walking around talking to people that I've known all my life. Their behavior has become more and more bizarre over the years. But in the last few months, it's really become bizarre. Well, um... Watchman says he doesn't have the mic, but uh, he could have gone into more detail. But he he knew you would take it, and uh, and then uh, then he comments, "Stay away from Kabbalah." I don't know if you have any comments about Kabbalah. Well, yeah, Kabbalah is religious. You know, I say stay away from Christianity, but look at us. We're, you know, according to the Bible, uh, when Paul, you know, when Paul was under house arrest, I think he was talking to the governor at the time, who was named Festus. And Festus told Paul, if I keep letting you talk to me, I'll become a Christian too. You know, Paul didn't say, I'm not a Christian. <laughs> he just said, well, you know, if you want, I'll help you with that. So, so, you know, it, it seems to me that it was common that they started calling Jesus' followers Christians. Uh, but even though Christianity had a, had a really, really uh, bad reputation from the start, you know, it was the, the Nicolaitans that went off into, I can't remember where they went, but they, they formed up in this one section. And in Revelation it says, you know, stay away from the Nicolaitans, I... I commend you for not talking to Nicolaitans, I condemn these for talking to the Nicolaitans. The Nicolaitans were the first ones to call themselves Christians. 
and they're bad. Oh, are bad. yeah. Yep. I've said that many times myself. Um, uh, Patricia responds again that Kabbalah <laughs> is what the Bible came from. <clears throat> Well, the Old Testament, I, I've heard it called Tanakh, but Kabbalah is all the books that all of the different rabbis have been writing for the last, you know, even before Jesus, I think they had already started writing those books. And, well, it's like I have the Talmud, and a lot of Kabbalah is Talmud. And, well, I just like I say, it's re it's a religion, it's a religious belief, and there's people that put all of their faith in it, and some people try to put, combine re to Kabbalah with the teachings of Jesus, but it, it has a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things in there that are unique to that belief that are not just, dis not just, not part of the Bible, but they it goes against the Bible in some places. But that could be said about certain books of the Bible. You know, the the book the books that were written by Solomon, uh, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes. Most Bible books say the word of God that came to Elijah as he sat on the banks of the river, or something like that. Uh, Solomon's writings start out with these are the wicked teachings of Solomon, or the the worthless human thinkings of Solomon. You know, it says in our English Bibles, it says this is the wisdom of Solomon or something like that. But that word wisdom or not the wisdom, the uh, proverbial sayings of Solomon. And if you look at that word proverbial sayings in Hebrew, it's really evil stuff. You know, it's like if you read you read, read the uh, the books of Solomon, it's stuff like. A lazy slave is worthless and should not be given food. And those who do not listen to their masters must be th cast out, that kind of stuff. And he who does not work a full 40 hours is a slob. <laughs> so that's, that's not anywhere else in the Bible. So it's, it's obvious when it says that these are these, you know, the proverbial sayings of Solomon, that's not a good thing. Guys, I was sitting in the dark. I'm well, on my porch, by the way. Patricia responds that Kabbalah came from Abraham, and it's not a religion, since religion is a corruption of Kabbalah, and that Kabbalah is really uh, the science of purpose. It tells us why we are in the state we are in. And then Watchman says that. it came from the Pharisees and Sadducees. It's wicked, period. Our word is inspired by the, of the Holy Spirit. Big, big difference. Okay, listen, Alec Lito. Don't read anything those people say again. <laughs> Just turn it into a fight. I don't want to fight. Okay, well, we got some hellos. Uh, Mountain Man says, hey, and greetings from the Midwest. Edward Bellamy says, this is a pleasant surprise on a Sunday afternoon here from Kentucky. And then Angela uh, Nadigo, uh, know what's stupid? I only just got a notification. Edward Bellamy says, uh, Paul put it this way. To live in this world is good. The greatest thing that can ever happen is to be participating in the final resurrection. But the intermediate state is even better. You know, to me, you know, whenever I go to the store, it just it's it's just weird to me to see all these people. I don't I don't like going in public anyway. But now, where people are wearing the sacred nose paper of everlasting sanctification that br brings everlasting life. That stuff just freaks me out. And when you're passing people and they're like saying, Be safe. <laughs> I'm like, I am safe. What are you talking about? But this is the greatest time in human history. You know, people have, uh, the prophets of old have always said, the civilization will end one day and we'll all be free. But they all lived their lives out and died without ever seeing it. Here we are. We've done nothing of our own accord to experience this. And every human that's resurrected is going to want to know. What in the world was it like near the end? It was terrible when we lived, but it must have been really bad for you. And yeah, nobody, just like the Bible said, people lost their ability to love one another. Can you hear the rain? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty loud. Yeah, I'm trying. You know, that's why I put the headphones on. I was hoping that would help because usually it makes things really, really 
just me, but oh, well. that's actually a do. hurricane. Do you know? Did you know that? We're, you're in a hurricane. I didn't know that. It didn't come on the news for me. Oh. I, well, I didn't know anything about it. My, I was talking to my mom on the phone, and she goes, "Oh my goodness! I'm like, what is it? This hurricane is really terrible." And I was like, "Where is it?" She said, "It's in Texas." And I thought, well, if it's in Texas, it must have originated in the Gulf of Mexico. Why didn't somebody tell me a hurricane was coming? You know, I like to track those things to, to know what to do. But I had, no, I had no clue. It's over there hitting Texas, and this is like one of the... It's a big hurricane. So those bands, feeder bands, whatever they call them, they've been going through, and they're going all the way to Alabama. So we've been getting some... We've been getting a lot of rain, and it's dark. Like I say, it's dark out there. Hmm. Well, um, I think regarding what you were talking about before, not about the hurricane, Kaykin uh, makes a comment. He says they're, they've changed the definition of our words and changed the actual words in the book, how lost we are now. Yeah, well, you know, it's like I was looking at the word fornication. I think pretty much everybody knows fornication is any sex you have outside of marriage. It's like if you're single and you have sex, it's fornication. If you're you're married and you have sex, that's uh, fornication. Well, it's adultery because adultery is when two people, when somebody who's married has sex with somebody they're not married to. But it's still fornication. Fornication is any sexual activity outside of a legal marriage between a man and a woman. And that's what it means. In English, that's what it means. But that word zana, the Greek, it comes from a Hebrew word that I can't think of right now that is also, mean, it gets translated as fornication. Very obviously, both words are the same, you know, because we've got that commandment, you know, thou shalt not commit fornication. But I got to looking at the word, and a cool thing about most languages is that words are made up of other words, and fornication, really, you know, like in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not commit fornication, it's Thou shalt not pretend to love someone in order to take advantage of them. So, and I've said this before, it's like a car salesman. He's your best buddy. That's fornication. He wants you to buy a car. He wants you to buy a car for the most amount of money with the least amount of service. And so he'll pretend to be your friend. But I mean, it, it, ad, it goes on into what marriage is actually. It's not about people who are not married having sex. In most cases, fornication is when two people get married. To have sex because each person is trying to wrangle the other person into a legally binding contract to serve them which is where most of the problems come in because once they realize they've got you and you can't escape then they realize the other person's got them and they can't escape and so most marriages end up just being two fornicators at war with one another patricia ribrick says fornication is an act of egoism looking only to pleasure the animal nature. I fantasize about that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, going back to the, the you're talking about the, uh, oh, actually, Courtney Hutchinson says that the, the hurricane is called Hannah. It's Hurricane Hannah. So. Is she, is she getting any of that? Is it hitting her? I don't know. We'll see. Let's see, Courtney. It's hitting you. Um, it's hitting my brother. My brother's in Montgomery. He's, you know, living in a trailer park. And that's, well, I think Montgomery's a couple of hundred miles inland, a few hundred miles inland. And, and he's scared to death because every time he says, anytime it starts to rain, twisters start forming just like around his living room. <laughs> um, let's see. Marie Miller says, uh, you're speaking uh, the good word. Uh, let's see. They're going back to the the masks you were talking about, uh, Mike Rogers uh, said it was like the land of Oz. And then Courtney Hutchinson says, best apocalypse ever. The Wi-Fi hasn't even gone out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, you know what? That, that's coming, maybe. I don't know. I've always That's what I'm paranoid about. I, I, have, I have very few needs in this life. You know, I need something to keep the rain from hitting me and I need something to keep the bugs from biting me. I need food and I need the, I don't want the internet. I need the internet. This is like my lifeline. You know, I don't want to go out into the masses of evil 
Republicans and Democrats to get beat up because I wore a mask or get beat up because I didn't wear a mask. Um, I mostly, you know, just this is my whole life. This is how I communicate with people. Uh, Courtney says that uh, the hurricane's not hitting her. They're just expecting an inch or two over the next week. Um, let's see. Uh, discernment files, uh, talking about the fornication and everything. Discernment files says uh, um, we're supposed to procreate, take care of the forest, worship God. How hard can it be? Well, it's, this is how hard it is right now. It's impossible. <laughs> but we, God knows where our heart is. You know, I'm living out here and, you know, I spent decades planting fruit trees and feeding squirrels and uh, on my little piece of property while my neighbors are coming over here and killing my animals and cutting down my trees. And so there is a big dividing line between those who want to do the will of God and those who want to be involved in religion. And so, can you see my mouse pointer thing on my nose? No, no. I just moved it. I just moved it. But I, I'm like, damn, no. I forgot about this. I'm on Skype. But for, for any people out there that want to know some of the technical issues we have to deal with, uh, this is all being broadcast from Scott's, uh, from my friend's location. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I'm using Skype to communicate to YouTube. I'm not actually on YouTube right now. I just my Skype channel is on YouTube. Okay, well, a couple more hellos. Uh, we have uh, 3D Zip Guy says greetings from the Philippines. Shannon uh, is saying greetings from Hungary. Just discovered you're online. And uh, Uncle Nesta says uh, hello, hello. Um, there is a couple comments. Let's see about the hurricane. Pajo says you're in a hurricane, but uh, he's in a forest fire in Northern California. Uh, let's well, see. Yeah. Is California close to Texas? <laughs> Maybe they could help each other out. Uh, yeah, I wonder. Yeah, one cancels out the other, right? And uh, regarding the uh, the masks again. Uh, I guess like you've always been saying, uh, discernment file says this is a forced Sabbath, you know, so, and, uh, it's kind of weird. You, you know, I, um, I'm really, I don't know what it's, I guess every place in the country now has, uh, has a law that you have to wear those things now. But, uh, but like right here, I, I tried to start doing it before they had a law because out of fear of people, you know, I'm always the guy that gets the first punch in the nose so I try to feel out what people want me to do and just do it you know I only mingle with them for an hour a week you know the rest of the time I'm here I don't I don't even wear clothes much less the nose paper but uh, man my mom called the other day and she was so upset that the United States broke a world's record of 5,000 deaths in a single day and she started counting tell me numbers of how many thousands have died and how many millions will die before it's over. And I, I mean, I don't, she's on the other end going, you don't even care. I'm like, I'm not going to say I don't care, but I can't get emotionally wrapped up in this because it's a war and I'm not on either team. I love you. You know, I support you and your efforts in this war, but I'm not going to fight the war. You know, I'll patch your wounds when you get, injured well um dj or dg says uh are we simply allow those against god's kingdom to impose these kind of rules and restriction on those that seek truth accepting a jubilee mass vaccinations the mark of the beast hey god's kingdom is where we live this is not god's kingdom this is satan's empire and as long as it belongs to satan we just have to accept that there's nothing we can do about it because our champion, you know, that's what savior is, is your champion. So right now the savior of Lord Satan's savior is the president of the United States. You know, if they get a new president, he'll be the, the champion. He'll be the savior of Satan's empire. Uh, Jesus Christ is the savior of our empire and he's, going to return. The Bible promises he's going to return. It doesn't say he's here. But when he is here, you know, one of the things in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says that 
and God, G Jesus, when he returns, will put an end to all powers and all authorities and all, I, I can't remember exactly how it's worded, but it's kind of like, in English, it doesn't mean anything, but, um, and looking at the Greek word, it's like when Jesus comes, he will put a, an end to all politicians and all, you know, all economic leaders and all religious leaders. It's like everyone who, who has a, a high position of power, a powerful position in, in the hierarchy will be done away with. But right now they're here and they have real weapons and they have real supporters and they have real legal systems. And I just try to play it by ear. You know, it's like the mask thing. Boy, I feel sick. You know, you, even though everybody's wearing one, I feel silly putting the thing on. You know, it's almost like I'm I'm actively supporting them. And you know what I keep telling myself, and I think I brought this out last week, is I remember when I was a kid and they wouldn't let me in the store because I wasn't wearing a shirt. I didn't get offended at that. And, and it, after all these years, I never even think about it. I put a shirt on before I go to the store. And this is it. This is the new, the new level of stupid that we have. When you go to the store, you put on a mask, you put on pants, you put on a shirt. You cannot think of this thing as something different than wearing underwear. You know, you know how when you put on underwear and you fart, no one can smell it? Well, that's what the mask does. If somebody else farts, that mask will keep you from smelling it. Couple more hellos, uh, Davy. <laughs> Are you buying that? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Well, I, all I got to say about that is I'm just glad you're wearing a shirt. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm sitting here in swim trunks and a shirt just in case a computer falls off the table. You know, uh, people are talking about uh, with this quarantine stuff, uh, all the businesses, the, all the business people are working from home and they're all in their uh, pajamas and stuff. And so nobody wears nice clothes anymore. But I guess it's a I guess it's a more of a costume or a suit, uh, like their ritual garments going to work, you know. Yeah, everything is a everything is a costume, you know. I think of like soldiers and sailors wearing costumes and policemen wearing costumes. But even if you just wear a pair of jeans and a t-shirt to go to the mall, that's a costume. There's it's not us, you know. When when Adam and Eve sinned. God went looking for him, and they hid. He said, why are you hiding from him? Because we're naked. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So why? Well, who declared you to be naked? Look, just wait there. I'll get you something. And he gave them burkas. You know, it says that he gave them cloths of skins or skins of cloths, and every religion has a different opinion about that. But in, in Hebrew, it says he gave them something to cover all of their skin, with the exception of the palms of their hands and the soles of their feet. This is just that thing you put on your face is just a part of the burqa, you know. Don't don't be surprised if they somehow introduce hats. You can't go shopping unless you have a hat or unless you're wearing long sleeves or something like that, you know. Yep, and uh, Bob G says he he feels mutual about the mask. Uh, Shannon uh, Holtz, uh, you know the, the one over the guy over in Germany, or not Germany, Hungary. Hungary, yeah, Hungary, yep. Yeah. Uh, he says uh, only grocery stores and pharmacies require them here in Hungary uh, for now. Other shops and restaurants no longer require them. People that comply ha have it on their chins, not their mouths and nose. Yeah, I was as I was walking around Walmart, I did see a lot of I saw one guy walking around with no mask on, and I thought, okay, he put a mask on to get in, got past the greeter, took his mask off, he's making a statement, and I'm, I'm not going to start anything with him. I saw a thing the other day, that guy Wrangler store, you know, he's the same height as me and he's muscular. He's not a, like, he's not like me. And he's a fireman. If you, He's got a YouTube channel. He's a, he really is a, a, a genuine tough guy. And he was saying he was in line the other day without a mask and it was lines where you had to be six feet apart. And the guy behind him goes, put on a mask. And he said he could hear the guy's girlfriend saying, tell him again, tell him again. And he said, put on a mask. And a dude turned around and said, make me. <laughs> I thought, <"Ew." laughs> that's why I don't get involved. 
if somebody says put on a mask, I put one on. And then if the guy next to him says take it off, take it off. And then I look at the two, try to you know see which one is going to be the winner if they start throwing blows, and do whatever that guy says. I have no desire to to defend my rights. Well, Patricia uh, says she wears her mask in uh, while she sleeps, and then uh, I, Irish two five five one says he wears his in the shower. The servant says I would never wear a mask, and we don't have to yet in Sweden. Um, don't think he ever would. Um, and then uh, the servant says hi, uh, and a couple more highs coming in from. Let's see. Uh, hold on. Uh, hi from, um, let's see, Davy Shofar says shalom from Georgia. Lara A says hello. And L- Lusaman38 says howdy from Bossier City. Not sure where that's. Bossier at. City, Bossier. Louisiana. Oh, okay. Down there in Not the swamps. Not too far from here. Yep. Maybe you guys can speak Creole together or something. <laughs> <laughs> I never was able to learn, <laughs> even as a child. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, no, actually, Patricia says she doesn't wear her mask when she sleeps. She wears clothes. So. <laughs> oh, oh, she wears hers when she sleeps, which is, you took it yeah. as mask. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't know. Uh Things are- you know, I, my washing machine is broke right now, right? No, you don't know that. But anyways, I just got my washing machine fixed. I went a year, I think, or a year and a half without a washer. I finally scraped up the money or got the courage or whatever to go down and get my washing machine fixed. And it didn't cost much. But here we are, three months later, it's broke again. So my mom says, I'll do your laundry. So I'm bringing her laundry. And two weeks later, I bring her another load, and it's like a pair of shorts. <laughs> and she's like... Well, who's washing the rest of your clothes? Hmm. Uh, let's see. Court, Courtney Hutchinson says the governor passed a mask mandate in, here in Arkansas, but the stores are not enforcing it. I think I heard about that with Walmart. Walmart passed a rule with a mask, and then they quickly just retracted it, too. So. Oh, you still there? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I blow it off? Oh, uh, no. No. They need to make this thing so when I'm looking at my screen, I can see all of my subscribers looking at me. You know, that way I would be on on my toes and wouldn't pick my nose or anything like that. Right now, I feel like I'm by myself. I could mess up. Yeah. Uh, so did you hear my comment about Courtney? She said about it. talked about Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, I know. It's like... Uh, there, there are states where, like, well, even in, in Mississippi, which is where I am, I think the governor said, no, we're not going to do that. And they, they held out for a long time. And I think, I, you know, I don't watch the news. I don't even want to comment on it. But there was some kind of squabble and somebody, you know, not God, but Obama or whoever's in charge now told them, you know, either wear a mask or we're going to cut off funding or send in the National Guard or turn off the lights or something. Uh, let's see. Maria Marie Miller says the next mask will be no nothing, but you will want a helmet. Yeah. Hey, you know, that's a, one of the things I was going to talk about before that in the last, I guess I did two of these things as live streams last week, and I had an, initially... The title of the first one, which never went through, I couldn't get the thing to work, was uh, it was three different things. The Melchizedek scripts, the mask thing, or the COVID-19 thing, and then there's the riots. And we never got around to the riots. And so that's a big deal, too. I guess I should address that. I don't really know what to say other than if somebody says, well, whose side are you on? I could say I'm on nobody's side. If they say, well, what do you think about them Confederate flags? And, you know, it's like, well, I don't, I don't have, a, I don't have a Confederate flag. <laughs> it's like that. I don't care what other people do. I don't have one. If somebody comes here and they, they're looking for my Confederate flag, I have to go to the neighbors. I don't have one of those things. And, and it's, but I don't have an American flag either. I, I don't understand how somebody can take offense 
at a Confederate flag and not take offense at the flag of Canada. You know, all of these things are like false gods. You know, I saw somebody posted something on Facebook. It said, worship freedom cloth. And it was a bunch of children like looking like zombies staring at performing the the flag ritual at, in uh, elementary school. And, you know, if you think about all the all of the people who were kidnapped in Africa, brought to the United States, and forced into slavery under the Confederate flag, that it might be zero, because I think they had already stopped importing humans by that time. But if you look at how many human beings in Africa were kidnapped under the American flag, it's like every one of them. And yet people are not te tearing down American flags there. They'll actually say a prayer to the Amer American flag as they go off to rip down Confederate flags. I don't have I don't have a say in it because I don't care, you know. But it just seems odd to me that the Bible says, "Have no idols, be don't, make no idols, have no gods before me," and people are not arguing about how it's wrong to have idols. They're arguing about which idols are good idols. Very bizarre. Patricia says that she likes the Canada flag because it has a maple leaf. It is cool because, you, you know, it's almost like it would be very easy to convert that to a marijuana leaf. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Not that you do that, but OK. I can't even I can't even stand close to the, you know, when I'm burning trash, I can't I got to light it and run because I can't breathe that smoke. So I sure can't breathe. I've tried marijuana before, like almost died just from taking one puff. Uh, regarding the protests, Marie Miller says, now, now, they're all just peaceful protests. Have you noticed that, how everything's peaceful? Yeah, you know, it's like uh, one of the things that I see a lot on the Internet, even though I try my best to avoid it. But I do watch all these viral videos where they show weird stuff that's happening that you don't normally see on the news. And they'll have a, a video of... Uh, 200 people rushing some building and knocking all the windows out and toppling over some staff. Look at what the Democrats do. You know, I don't I don't know that my mom actually would profess to being a Democrat, but she spends a lot of time talking about how horrible the Republicans are. So as far as I'm concerned, she's a Democrat. My mom my mom wouldn't storm some building or pull over some statue. She thinks that stuff is stupid. You can't make generalizations about the liberals are this way, and the Democrats are this way, and Black Lives Matter this way, and because it, it's there's thousands of people belong to that, and they're all different. You know, there's not there are not two teams. We always think that it's you know like the two pillars in front of Solomon's Temple. They represented the two teams. So it's Twin Towers in New York. They represent the two teams. The two lines going through the dollar dollar sign. You know, it's two, the two teams. But right now, there are approximately 7 billion plus teams on this planet. Everybody that's a Catholic is not friendly with everybody else who's a Catholic, because some of the Catholics are black and some are white. Some are Democrats, some are Republicans, some are men, some are women. You know, some live in America, some live in Russia. There's 7, mil 7 billion, did I say 7 million? 7 billion teams. Matt Wilcox uh, brings up an interesting point about this, you know, um, the flag issue and everything. And he says, uh, regarding the statues, notice how the statues can't defend themselves. So, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, it's like me. If they want, if they want to make a statement and come beat the tar out of me, I can't defend myself. You know, I can't even use a wrench anymore. So. Um, let's see, uh, there's one more comment about the, the masks and the closures and everything from Courtney Hutchinson. It says, uh, yeah, that the Walmart, uh, they, they passed the thing where you had to wear the mask, and then the um, Arkansas governor passed it the next day. The only punishment for businesses is, get, is getting their liquor license taken away, and apparently none of them really care about it anyway, so... <laughs> yeah, they plus they don't sell liquor, so yeah. or maybe they do. I don't know. I don't know what different states are different. And in Mississippi, every every entity can have a liquor store, but you can only have one. And so if you're an if you're Walmart, 
one Walmart in the state of Mississippi has a liquor store. I don't even know where it is now, but I think it was in it's in Jackson. Uh, like our Win Dixie had one liquor store, and it was right down the street from me, and it was cheap and it was good. And they shut that down, and I think they moved the liquor store to some Win Dixie, two hundred miles from here. So I gave up alcohol because of that. Uh, well, talking about vices, uh, Shannon uh, over there in Hungary recommends edible marijuana brownies and cookies. That's what he does. Uh, I guess you avoid the smoke that way, you know. Yeah, well, you know, in Hungary, it's not like $75 an ounce, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, about the joke I made about speaking Creole, Joe Sereno says, hmm, Henry, speaking Creole, is that something like Jamaican patois? Maybe some Creole classes for non-Louisianans. <laughs> I hope I can do it. You know, they get they had this guy named uh, Justin Wilson. Is that him? Did do you remember somebody named Justin Wilson? He's a cook. He was selling cookbooks. He had a TV show where he cooked. And I didn't know what that dude was saying. He'd be up there. Now I got to do your liquor. Put a little in there with that there corn. Like, who's listening to this? <laughs> Why don't they have subtitles or something? It was a funny dude. He was funny, but he was a real, you know, in real in real life, one of my friends met him, and he was, like, really coarse. Okay, well, um, I think we're coming up to the end of the hour, so uh, we'll try to hopefully have ah, That's okay. Better. Let's just keep going. Two or three hours ain't going to hurt nobody. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure uh, nobody likes the rain in the background, so why don't we? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, on top of that is, like, I think most people only watch five minutes anyway, so the... They may watch five minutes at the end or the beginning or the middle. They're not going to watch an hour. Mm-hmm. Well, we've had some people from here uh, from the beginning to the end. So uh, why don't we go ahead and wrap up, and uh, we'll see everybody next week. And we'll just be doing it, I guess, every every Sunday at noon. Sounds good to me. I, I mean, I, I like being in regular contact with people. And, oh, yeah, I'm very, very close on the Melchizedek script. You know, the big deal here is going to be making a, a spot nice enough to shoot the video and then setting all the gear up and, and, you know, putting this, loading the scripts up into the teleprompter and, you know, it's, but it's, the writing part is almost complete. So this is going to be, this is going to be epic. You're going to be, your minds are going to be blown. Uh, if you get an opportunity, like I say, and part of what I've been researching for the Melchizedek scripts is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 talking about the things we can expect to experience after we're resurrected because that's like a big deal what what's what's it going to be like for us you know are we you know going to have kids after the resurrection are we going to eat food after the resurrection well i don't know maybe it'll be so much fun to be able to you know do miracles that we won't even think about that stuff i don't know well, it'll be, it's got to be better than this. There's nothing that could be this miserable. I, I hate looking around and seeing human beings look like me, you know, head like me, hands, legs, and acting so cold, you know, unloving, that um, I, I just keep telling myself this is going to be over soon. And hopefully uh, when I come on here and talk like this, that it encourages others to, to put their hopes in their future and not try to fix this mess because this can't be fixed. Oh, well, we'll see you next week. Um, I think same time, Alo Toledo. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. What about? Th- it's noon my time, whatever time it is for y'all. And what about the people that don't want to survive? Yeah. Well, if you don't want to survive, 